Mehmet kann das dauern. You're watching Georgian Fighting Championship live from Eclipse in Batumi. And the next fighter making his way down to the cage, representing Kanakal in Turkey, is Mehmet Kantazdevan. Kantazdevan, 25 years of age, weighing in at 65.8 kilograms yesterday, standing 168 centimeters tall. He has a perfect professional record of one win and no defeat. His club in Kanakal, Turkey is a glorious MMA. And there uh, he gives a hug to his cornermen and training partners before he enters the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, now welcome his opponent to the cage, David Lord Kibenitsa! His opponent now making his way down to the red corner of the cage. Representing the Batumi Fight Academy here in Batumi, Georgia. 23 years of age, 65.8 kilograms for this featherweight professional contest at 180 centimeters tall, 12 centimeters taller than his opponent. The same record, one win and no defeats. This is David Lort Kipenitsi. talked so many times about how these fighters can get on a roll you know you've got the fighters from your team winning and coming back and winning and it really builds the morale in the dressing room they lost that first fight on points but since then we've seen two submission wins and let's see if we can keep that rolling for these home team fighters Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a GFC bout in the featherweight division. Now let me introduce your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 25 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 168 centimeters tall and has a professional record of one win with no losses. Representing glorious MMA from Kankali, Turkey, Mamed Khan Tastovan! And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 23 years old. He weighed in at 65.8 kilograms. He stands 180 centimeters tall and has a professional record of one win and no losses. Representing Batami Fight Academy from Batami, Georgia, David Lortipkinidza! And your referee for this bout, Hadi Muhammad Ali. Here we go, featherweight professional contest here at GFC 23. Kantazdevan in the blue. 
Lort keeping it in the red. Oh, big overhand right to start off. It this man needs that, business, Ian. but that's what happens if you swing for the fences. A little duck under, nice little take down there, Ian. Well, Lorke Kipanizzi looks massive at the way. He's huge next to Cantasvedon, but he fielded a big right hand there on the jaw, and that can change things around at the start of the fight. Well, he swung that right hand from the back fence, to be honest. But if it connects, it connects hard. Lorke Kipanizzi on top. You can see Cantasvedon looking for the sweep. Solid overhook there. Yeah, he's not allowing anything to happen. Lord Kipinitsa trying to get the arms free. Cantas Dawen hanging on real tight. But how long can he hold on for, though, Ian? I mean, there's only so long you can hold on with fresh arms. He's going to tire himself out just working this underhook. He needs to try and look for some sweeps or submissions when you're on the bottom position. Best position to be in if you're on your back, which is have someone in between your legs in the guard. But he needs to work it. The guard is wide open. He's got an underhook on one side, overhook on the other. Well, there's blood pouring out the nose of Lord Kipinitsky from that first right hand. Was that from the first shot? I didn't yeah, see that. I think, and maybe that's what's taking him a bit of time to get his head together. You know, he's inside that guard, but you can see the blood all around his face. And he's just really holding Kantasvin and hold close to him. So maybe he's happy for this little bit of a rest while he just gets his head together from that shot. You know, as much as Kantasvin's holding on to him with the overhook, I think he's holding with two deep underhooks himself. Starting to work those strikes now with the right hand from the top position. But uh, yeah, you're yeah, exactly right, because I've just noticed it there. He took two good clean shots and then grabbed the body. Two good clean shots and then grabbed his hands around the body. Yeah, I think the, the holding here is 50 50 between the two of them. Is he looking to try to pass now? He needs to. He needs to. It was easy pass there. It was wide open. All he had to do was step over that leg. Yeah, Lord Kipinitsa needs to posture back. No volume of strikes, no power from these strikes. Nearly got swept there. Yeah, he's keeping low. When Kantasvin turns to the side and puts that knee shield in, that's his opportunity to try to pass. I think he's too worried about the sweep to try. And here again, you know, the same position again. Like I said, more, more likely than, than the passes, it looks like he might get swept. Elbows is his thing right now. He's coming down with little short elbows. You don't need much room for an elbow. Not at all. Not as much as you do for a, for a strike, for a punch. He postures up a little bit there. Head still low, but legs are up in the air. Yeah, using that head now, trying to crush Kantazan against the fence. Very content to go back into the full guard position there. He'd kind of pass to half. It's what we call a grinder. See in the same position, you grind out the round, you go through to the second round, you grind out that round, and this is what he's doing right now, just grinding out the round. Not too bothered about the finish. Yeah, I mean, there where you thought they might try to pass, he was happy to just actually lift the knee up and back into that full guard position. He doesn't seem to like it when, he's got the opportunity to pass when that knee shield's in, but he doesn't seem to like it. He's oh, more worried about the, the sweep. Pass, yeah, the pass was there quite a few times, to be honest. Well, we're under a minute to go, first round. Yeah. And again, we see that knee shield in. Well, there was that big right hand at the start, and from then it's been Kantansford and on top, just doing enough work, really, to keep this action on the floor. Yeah, he steps himself back into the guard there. I mean, yeah, sure, it's tactful. You're going to win the round, you, but you've got to do this for three rounds. Not That's a little bit better. He postured this time. Now, whether he knew there was 10 seconds to go, not sure if his corner men shouted out there was 10 seconds or whether he heard the knock, but as soon as that 10 seconds was available, he postured up. Well, that might give him some confidence coming into round number two of what he can do, because that was his best bit of work there. And, and 
Look, he's really forced a, a bad decision there in position by Cantadsville. Yeah, the eye is actually swollen. The eye is swollen, the blood is bleeding from the nose. Lord Kippen adds that. So you wonder if you're right in that first opening shot caught him. Oh, we're going to see that now. Boom, that there huge, you go. That's yeah. exactly where it was as well, right on the side of the eye. Yeah, huge overhand right. And then it was just as soon as he got down to the floor, I noticed the blood all around the nose. I didn't see another big shot in between that. So I think what uh, Lord Kipanitsi needs to do when he comes out is be just ready for the big overhand right coming. Yeah. Instructions from the corner. See there in the Turkish corner. Just slapping the arms. Trying to stop the lactic acid build up there in the shoulders and arms. And also I think the G there fighter on a little bit. So here we go. Georgian Fighting Championship 23. This is round number two of a featherweight professional contest. Well, let's see if that overhand. There we go. Overhand came. Missed by a mile. That allowed Lord Kipinitsa to get the takedown. And now this time he passes the guard. Like you said, he maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of confidence. Yeah, definitely. I think he felt a bit of confidence there early on. Continued where he left up at, off at the end of round one. Round one was a really good performance from him for probably the last 10 seconds. Like you said, I think it was like he heard the knocker and decided, right, it's time to go. Yeah. But, but again, we're back in the full it's, guard. It's Will we see another five minutes of this right up until 10 seconds to go? Let's hope not. Throwing that left hand over and then as soon as the head moves to the other side, he starts working with that right hand. But again, like you say, it's that grinding kind of style where... Now this is a guard pass if I ever saw one. No, it wasn't. Again, each time he's done that, Ian, he's just been... He's looked so concerned about the sweep that he'd rather sit in full guard. He could step across now, not going to. Again, chopping the shots in from inside this guard position. I mean, you can see the blood still coming from his nose. So it's going across the chest. There's, there's quite a lot of blood actually there nice as well. Nice short elbow as well. Yeah, again, like you said, that over, overarm short elbow with the left hand. Quite happy to sit in guard. I mean, who could blame him? No risks, no danger. He doesn't feel as if he's in any danger whatsoever sitting in that position. There's no submission attacks from the bottom. Well, pushes himself back into guard. He's kind of stepped over to half. Back into full guard. Yeah, he's, he's a fair few times he's sort of half passed and then gone back into that guard position. And then the blood, that's on the face. Yeah, of Cantazan, and that's actually the blood from Lord Kipanitsi's nose still coming out. His eyes it, quite shut as well by the looks of it. His face actually looks. I didn't see any punches in this time. Uh, no, I don't think there's been so anything. So I think other he's just squeezing yeah. the head into his chest. You know, Kantasvin is controlling that head. He's been pulling it into his chest. And maybe that's what's made the nose bleed. Kantasvin is doing a good job, really, of just negating any of these attacks from the top position. He's not. There's still enough work for him not to get stood back up, but he's trying to turn, trying to get the knee shield, but nothing significant it's has hit him. It's quite basic MMA. That's, that, yeah. that, that's what we're looking at right here. It's basic MMA. There's no, there's no attempt to finish whatsoever. There's no attempt to pass. There's no attempt to submit from the bottom. So, yeah, I mean, they, they, they are beginners, but this is what we would call basic MMA. Yeah, two guys... Both won the pro debuts. And this is a very evenly matched fight. Well, a half guard now. Let's see if he steps back into full guard or will he try to pass? 
half guard a great place for ground and pound but he just settles to go back into the full guard that was a better shot there could hear that land solid shots from underneath now yeah but Kantas Dowen needs to try and get back to his feet he's he's he's, he's allowing the, the the top position too easy to lay on top of him he needs to try and get back to his feet not once have we seen him try to get back to his feet not once in this whole round or the first round I don't care who you are you cannot win a fight by throwing punches from bottom the man on top will always be winning attempting submissions and nearly pulling off a submission is another thing but just throwing punches from the bottom nowhere yeah well, again he tries to use that knee shield just to try to make enough space but you know he's making space he's not making that space to stand back up he's not making that space to put his shoulders onto the fence well i know it's kind of hard to see from the viewing position but they've kind of done a full circle all the way around the cage yeah. in the five minutes they've been on the ground Okay, well, what we've got there is two rounds to the fighter from Georgia on my card, at least. Purely from the fact that he's got the takedown, got the top position and controlled from inside the guard. And the majority of the time he has spent inside that guard. Little passes to half, trying to deal with the knee shield, but each time he does and he comes back in and that's what we're gonna see here. Here's the full guard strike coming into the body elbow over to the head and there you see these attempts at the knee shield and the, looking for that sort of scissor sweep position from underneath but each time shut down by Lock Kipanidze as he grinds away from on top Here we go, third and final round here in Batumi, Georgia. Georgian Fighting Championship 23. Kantasvedan. In the, oh, it's the cut now above the left eye. And the, the referee's asked for that to be checked. That is quite a bad cut there, Ian. I, I, I can't see that stopping. No. Although it's a... a a fairly large cut because it's not bleeding too bad it's not really affecting the vision or anything I think they're gonna let this continue referee just being careful here safety has to come first to these mixed martial arts contests well let's see how the third round starts off because however it starts that's how it will finish Again with that overhand he right. looked for it, but... Oh, he, my word. After the first one, I think they're way too telegraphed, Ian. Again, take I, down. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. Three rounds, three overhand rights right at the beginning. Three times he's on his back. Lock. Talk about once bitten, twice shy. Lock, you could say, happy to go on top of we know. Maybe it's because of that cut that he's not wanting to do anything too much. He's thinking, I've got to play it safe. Pulling those hips away from the fence and then dropping back down into the guard. He's not posturing up at all where he's at danger of being struck from underneath. So Lock keeping his seat again on top. And as you described at the end of round number two, they're kind of just working their way around the fence. We've done a full circle of this cage already. Well, given this packed out house here, at least everyone in the house is getting a close look at this action. The head driving in underneath the chin. This is better work well, actually. Can't to and, could, even if he just jumps to his knees now turns to his knees fair enough he might have a chance of getting his back taken but it's better than being on your back and being totally dominated you know sometimes you've got to take risks but 
there's been opportunities for both guys to take risks during this fight, and both of them have taken the safer option each time. You know, Kantasvenen has the chance to turn to his knees, try to stand up. Lorki Panitsky has had the chance to try to pass that knee shield. Each time the fighters have taken the easy option, they've gone back into a position where they feel at least comfortable. That's not how you win fights. But surely Kantas Dowen knows he's losing his fight. And I mean, well, he's, he's not just losing. His corner it. should be telling him at least, even if he doesn't but then, know. Now, get your knees and stand up. Do, 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 do something different. Again, over and over, we've seen that position, that knee shield. And when he gets the knee shield, you know, he turns onto his side, he gets the knee shield. What he tends to do is grapevine is that bottom leg. Well, that stops him from being able to stand up. So he's, he's actually um, stopping his own movement. Not once have we seen him try to use the, the cage wall to get back to his feet. But whenever I see a fighter like this, you know, he's 1-0, and, and you see these sort of positions, it makes you think he doesn't do a lot of training actually in a cage. You know, if you've got a cage in the gym and you're working constantly in these sort of positions and working those, the wall walks and things like that, that would help you in this position then that would start to come naturally at the moment he's all he's doing is turning with that niche looking for that sort of scissor sweep which is more what you'd see someone do in the middle of a yeah, match yeah yeah that, that 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 he has attempted that quite a few times half foot the fly guard the lift and sweep scissor sweep to turn them over there we go there's the push of the leg that he's got, now he's got the the knee shield in the bridge trying to create a gap between him and his opponent but nothing doing with it that's the problem it's as if he's doing half a move and then doesn't know what to do after that what happened to the good old elbow hand hip and get back to your feet worked for me and, and it, this is the sort of bread and butter fundamentals that you should be doing working in a cage I think I remember us working in that cage at Quantum maybe 15 years ago and those same moves that we still do now the old ones always work. Well, that eye is bleeding profusely there all over the chest. Well, I'm sure it'll be a badge of honour because in 40 seconds time, I believe that man there in top position, Lord Kipinitsa, he's going to take this unless something amazing happens from bottom position. Yeah, I think we'd have to see a submission now. We've got 20 seconds. I don't think there's a lot of time to set up a choke or an arm lock or anything from underneath. I think this is going to be a ground-out decision from a man who got his eye cut and his nose damaged in the first 10 seconds of this fight. Well, there we go, right at the end again. Now there to his knees. But he swings back round again to his back. Never once tried to stand up again. Just takes punishment. And... That's three rounds of total dominance. Yeah, three rounds dominated. The best work from Mehmet Kantazdevan of Turkey was the very first punch he threw. And after that, David Lokipinisi turned his game on. And we saw the control. Albeit mainly from inside that guard. He worked grinding away, punches to the body and head. And then these solid elbows. And it was in the last 10 seconds of each round that he seemed to let go. That was the end of the fight there. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a unanimous decision in favour of your winner, David Lortimanitza! Well-deserved decision there for David Lortimanitza. 
23-year-old fighter from the uh, Jumi Fight Academy in Georgia.